name is Seth Swirsky, and I've loved the Beatles ever since I was a small boy in the very early 60s. And so I've always been so inspired by them. And it's why I became a songwriter and recording artist myself. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to play the Cavern Club in Liverpool, England, the place the Beatles made famous in their early days. While I was there, a number of people told me some great stories about them that I'd never heard before, and I remember thinking how many more of these incredible stories are out there that people have never heard, and how much fun would it be to buy a video camera and try to find those great stories? And that's exactly what I did over the next 12 months of my life. Said, can you believe this is all for you? He said, no, I think it's Faringo. Faringo? Who's Faringo? Faringo. 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 There's the Dakota across Central Park, and I have my great memory of John Lennon when I met him that one night. I'm walking down Lexington Avenue with my wife. And all of a sudden, coming toward us, is Paul McCartney. So here I am telling George how to play a song that's been on a Beatles album. Yeah, yeah, right, Dad. I remember that. Yeah, sure I do. Because it was John's song. <laughs> there was these girls that liked to get undressed and start doing exercises right in front of the window. The next day, Ringo brought in the biggest pair of binoculars I've ever seen in my life. I went to the ad lib with John Lennon. It was a two drink minimum and I was 15. I couldn't get a drink, but he says, I'll get the two Bacardis, you get two Cokes, I have two Bacardis, two Cokes. He gave me a Bacardi, I gave him a Coke, and we were drinking together, you know. Here is the greatest band in the world, and I am playing Monopoly with the fabulous George Harrison, and I could not concentrate on my Monopoly game. <laughs> We get them out of the ambulance, we get them into the armored car, but I looked up and all I could see was a mound of girls. Sunday morning at five o'clock she is. He played it for me before he recorded it. Ringo and George came to my house to visit and to play. Well, actually, I met them naked. John sat at the piano. He said, I want to want something by you. Tell me what you think of it. And it was, I want to hold your hand. Paul takes me behind this thing and there is a Mellotron. And he goes, this is the one. And he sits down and he starts playing the beginning to strive. He feels at that point, I almost internally hemorrhaged. And there I was, I was caught up in one of those dashes from the building and just fantastic. It occurred to me that maybe being the daughter of the President of the United States, I might be able to have every adolescent's dream come true. The Beatles come to my house. You're satisfied, tell me that you want the totally crazy that I'm even here. You're here. Totally crazy. <laughs> this is nuts. This was George's guitar. I put the original up and it was silent in the room. Nobody said a word. This is just a short note to thank you for naming that lump of rock Ringo. Next time, could you make it a planet or a sun or a moon? Or if you're not too busy, maybe even a black hole. This is Rock Island Line. This actually belonged to John. I can't believe I'm in the car with Norman Smith. <laughs> I went down and read the lyric. And it said, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought to myself, oh, his word, this is going to be some sort of funny song. George would save my songs in a lot of cases, the songs I was going to throw away. And he'd get his guitar out and, and, and play the song with you. Just brilliant. Paul immediately proceeds to get a pint of beer, sticks it on the piano, and thumps away playing pub songs. And all the locals join in. I do like to be beside the seaside. Remember that song? When George finished the song, Apple Scruff, he asked us to all come in. And of course, we were dumbfounded because we were never asked to come in. 
when I got back to camp and announced this discovery, everyone wanted to come out and see it. So we delayed lunch, we went back, we saw the area. That night we celebrated the discovery. And with a tape playing with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band in the background, the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds came up. Much to the surprise of a couple hundred thousand viewers, all of a sudden John Lennon popped into their television screen doing the weather on Action News in Philadelphia. I knew John really well, so we were both totally gutted and like in shock. At the end of the day, Linda said, now we want to see all these pictures in the morning, first thing in the morning, because we need to pick one for the cover of Life magazine. <laughs> my only life cup. So here we are in the dugout, and all of a sudden up on the scoreboard, our manager flashes a sign. The rascals are coming. The rascals are coming. Brian Epstein did not think that was such a great idea. <laughs> and I was running full speed, and all of a sudden it caught up with me, turned me around, and it was George, and that was our first kiss. The best kiss ever in my life. Not many people know this, but this is what happened. 